Hi guys, so for today's Freeform Friday, I'm going to play with these Local King stamps. I mentioned just the other day, for some reason it popped in my head, this type of stamp. I guess when I was working with the, uh, yeah, the stamp press that I just reviewed. And um, so that's what I'm going to do today. Uh, I do not have an affiliate relationship in any way with Local King. It's just sometimes they would send items for review. This I purchased myself, but... Um, just to let you know, the links I have in the description box would just be for ease of use, and then links for like the other uh, standard items that I always use would be affiliate links, which means I'll make a small commission if you purchase items to those links. But again, with Local King, I don't have that kind of affiliate relationship. But um, I've had this for a little while, and I went to look it up, and then I, you know what? And look at it now. Did I use this one already? Ah, oh, bummer. I wanted to use one I haven't used. I can see there's ink on it now. You know what? I changed my mind. Let me grab a different one. <laughs> <laughs> let me grab a different one. We're doing this like it was live here. Um, let me see. I was thinking about using these little guys. And this is kind of how I keep them. I have them in one of these iris tubs. And I have several of them full of Local King. Um, I know I use those butterflies. I was looking at this guy. And now, I mean, I remember using similar ones. But I don't think I've used this one in particular. Okay, let's do this one. Because this is the other one I was thinking about using. He's so cute. So... Sorry, tea time. We've already used you. We're not going to use it today again. We have this one. Oh, look at this one. I think I'd use the frog guy, didn't I? Oh, maybe not. This one's so cute, too. Well, anyway, they're all very similar in the way that we're going to color them. I haven't done this in a long time, so hopefully, hopefully I remember what to do. Now, ooh, sorry about that. <laughs> and I push it back in the container that holds those cases. It just made like a really ugly sound. Um, I'm going to use my little markers, and I have this set of 60 that they also sell, and I bought this, um, I think it was like when I bought that, this came free or something. But I've been using this set, as you can see, it's well loved, and I dropped it and all kinds of things, so she looks a little worse for the wear, or no worse for the wear. Um, I try to keep them in order, just so I remember, you know, the color order here, but these are the ones I use. Um, you know, Lisa herself will tell you, you can use any water-based marker, I mean, if you want to use your, um, what are those fancy ones I have? I don't have any sitting in front of me. I forget the name. I, I want to say Sukaneko, but that's not right. Anyway, anything. Or even like these Arteza ones with the brush tip. I mean, however you, whatever you want to use. Crayola. <laughs> you know, some people use them and that works too. Um, but I have these pretty colors, so we're going to use these today. And I'm probably going to use the background stamp in some way. So I'll have that. And then we're going to use this guy. And hopefully I haven't used this one. I don't think I have. It's called 27, ooh, 2017 A5 Combo. So this one's even older than the other one. The other one I think came out in 2019. I just popped over to their site to make sure to see if it was even available. If, if it was something I could, uh, you know, put the link there for you guys. And um, it said 2019. So yeah, no, I don't think I've used this one. Okay, normally I stamp on shiny, like, paper that I have from Local King that they don't sell anymore. You can source at different places. So today what I'm going to do is stamp on very, very smooth cardstock, which is going to be the Crafter's Companion Ultra Smooth um, Marker, basically, card. Uh, because it is very smooth. So something, when it's very smooth, it just, it just looks nicer. It might beat up anyway, we're going to see. I guess this is another test we'll do. So I'm just pulling out this whole piece of paper. I probably have pieces that I can use that are smaller, but that's okay. And then we're going to use this. Oh, and then for preparation for this, so yesterday I reviewed this stamp press, and I should clean it. I just realized when I did the um, editing, I was like, oh, I never cleaned it off. It's going to start getting as messy as my other one, but, you know, they're tools. I'm not too worried about that. It does come with these two uh, magnets. Now, I happen to have more magnets because I have this one the Crafters Companion platform that I don't really use very often so I'm gonna do oh my gosh I don't want to scrape this let's get this guy off of here I'm gonna add two more magnets to this because I'm gonna use this way more often than I use this Crafters Companion one and some washi hold on oh this is cute I think this washi that gabbing with Grammy gave me in one of the uh, swaps little gnomes how adorable is that I'm just gonna basically how do I undo this oh you know what? I'll start down here I want it to stay flat no I'm not gonna do that right down here come across the top and join over here I'm just trying to make it so it's easy for me to grab this off of this thing when I'm done here now I can just tear that off but I'm just gonna cut that straight 
And I'll do the same with this other one so that way I have a little tabby that kind of helps me pick it up. Okay? So I'll be right back. And that's just to help me pick those up and we'll see. I don't know if I even need them, but it's good to have some extras. Okay. So whenever I reviewed this stamp press yesterday, we had talked about, or I had talked about there was no lip here and people are like, oh, use this and do that or, you know, and that's fine. But then um, one of my girls here, Dieta, was like, oh, well, you can use a larger piece of paper. And I'm like, you know what? That is one of my issues with the other one where that lip is in the way so if I want to put a piece of paper out this way because I want to stamp it in a certain spot like whenever I sometimes I put my card together before I stamp it which is not the best thing to do but it happens um, I want to move it over more or, or something there's just some reason sometimes when I want to go over the lip so anyway that is pretty good I guess I'm still gonna line it up with that lip I don't know why and then We're going to cut this out completely from this piece of paper. Now, I've played with this many different ways in the past because of the die that comes with it. This one actually only has the one die. It is going to cut the picture out completely. We have other die sets where, because this is kind of older, right? It's from 2017. Where she has an outer die plus the inner one and all these other fun things. So, just different ways to use it. But for now, I'm going to cut exactly, you know, what's going on here. And then we'll go from there and see what happens as far as dressing it up in other ways. I don't know if I really need these for this particular project, but put those on there. And again, when I pop this down, if there is a big air bubble, and that's actually something I learned from Lisa, I don't know if you can see this kind of a big air bubble here, it'll make it very difficult for you to actually stamp that, so try to get rid of those air bubbles as much as you can. It just makes a pocket that is like impossible to <laughs> penetrate, so I'm just gonna get rid of the air you have little ones, but when you have a big pocket, that's when it kind of gets in the way. Okay, so we have that. I didn't really need to put the paper ready yet, but but it's there now. Okay. <clears throat> now, <laughs> this is the fun stuff. I'll get a little bit closer. So again, ultra smooth paper, so hopefully it doesn't beat up. And we're going to probably stamp it twice anyway, so it doesn't really matter. There's something in the way here. If this is the first time you're using a stamp, you can take an eraser. I should probably have a bigger eraser, like this one. Just pencil eraser. And go over and just get rid of that little sheen that it has on top. And it kind of helps the marker stick to it. I used to not do this and it was fine, but ever since um, Lisa had mentioned it, I'm like, oh, I'll do that. <laughs> so I do do that. Okay. And I'm going to sit down, because this does take a little minute, and you don't have to be super fast with it. What happens is before I stamp it, I'm going to go, I'm going to put my breath on it, basically, and that kind of reconstitutes the um, the marker if it happens to dry out as you're working. So, you know, let's check it out, and a lot of times what I do is I'll keep the little image in front of me. This one, unfortunately, because this is an older one, it doesn't have, like, colors, like the newer ones, like this one even has color on this. Um, she'll have it in color, so you can kind of think about what you want to do, but... Let's see. Let's go with light and dark green. So you want to usually pick two colors that are going to coordinate like shadow and light, basically. Um, honestly, I have no idea what I want to do with this. <laughs> Let's see. Um, the light pink and the deeper pink for the flower. Flower center, all the green stuff around. The frame on the outside, I like to go with brown and dark brown sometimes because I just like the coloring. Our little birds. Hmm. These little tropical kind of fun birds. What are we looking at? Uh, I want to make them like blue, but it's even orange birds. I don't know. Hmm. Let's see what color this is. That's a pretty color. Huh. Okay, maybe we'll go with these blue colors. So mostly everything's going to be light green. <laughs> so I'm going to start with this and start with the light green and I'm just keeping it kind of sideways. You know, the branch doesn't have to be green. If you want to bring in some more brown or something, go ahead. Kind of taking a pause there for the little thing. I'm going over his little feet because I'm going to go over that with darker color anyway. Going over this area that I think should also be green. And that's a big area already, so let me just finish this one here. 
So what happens when you come in here is then you take like the darker green and you can just put some here and there. I don't put it everywhere. But just wherever you want. You know, following some of the different areas. Um, what else is green? This little center. I'm just going to make it green, make it easy. I'm kind of looking at the image, this whole part here should be green. And this stem or whatever can be green. Again, with a little bit of this, a little something there. Oh, this one should... I don't know. Oh, yeah, I guess this should all be green. It looks like a leaf to me, not so much the flower itself. Mind frame? Okay. <laughs> I want to make sure I put that where you guys can see it. So again, there's that. Add some green here and there. Okay. And then let's say the flower, like I said, is pink. So we start again with the light pink. And I can see it goes here. That might not be flower. That might be stem, but that's okay. It looks nice regardless. I mean, there's so much going on that it'd be very hard for someone to see it and say, oh, I think that's actually part of the leaf, <laughs> not the flower or whatever. All right. And then take some of the darker pink and just bring it in wherever. You kind of want to remember, too, where you're putting colors, though, because we might have to stamp it again. And normally we do. We stamp it, like, twice. Um, color that in. So there's that. And then our little birdies. I'm going to start with the lightest blue. And you can play with this. Like, the wings don't have to be the same as, you know, the rest of the body. I'm pretty much just doing this everything blue because I haven't done this in a while. <laughs> so I'm trying to remember how I used to do this. I'll probably bring some black in for accents here and there. So you can see I did his whole body in blue. The light blue. Same thing with this little guy. I'll do the whole body in the light blue. I'm just doing the whole thing. We're going to bring in some dark blue and then we're going to bring in some black. So no worries. Dark blue. Maybe along his little wing here. And here. I don't know. Down in his little tail. This little scruffy stuff here. Um, where else? Maybe on top of his little head. And then I'm going to take the black and put it on his little eye around there, his little beak. Just put it in there. And you see how messy it is? It'll be fine. <laughs> um, and then his little feet, if you want to do the little feet. I'm using black, but you can do shades of brown or whatever. And then Lisa always takes the black and just kind of puts dots here and there because it just breaks up the color and makes everything look nicer. So hopefully you can kind of see what I'm doing. I'm taking a little bit of just black and putting dots. I know you think, like, that's weird, but it just really does break up the color and just makes it look that much awesome, more awesome. Um, okay, we have that. I can see I missed a little bit of this wing. And then I'm going to go around the whole thing. I'm using the light brown. And I'm just going to go around the frame. And then I'll take the dark brown and just have that do some fun accenting. Dark brown, which looks almost black. Just put some dots on that frame. Okay. Now, ooh, did I... <laughs> I thought I was coloring that in an area where it would be fine. But you know what? It looks like it's going to be right in the way. So let me turn this around. And let's put our clippies back down. Let me see if that's okay. And then I just pick, gotta pick out a moon and go. <sighs> I know that's weird. <sighs> I'm just putting my breath on that. And we'll push that down. Ooh. <laughs> Again, this thing really accommodates red rubber stamps and everything really well. And I'm just kind of going over, 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 over many times. It's probably not necessary. Oh, I missed that whole middle section. Again, it might be an air bubble in there. So, let's see what happens. Ooh, not bad. I'm going to try and remedy that air bubble again. Uh, no, I think I just need to push there. It's just a big rubber stamp, so 
I just need to have more push in that area. Okay, so again, ultra smooth card. It looks very different when you use the shiny card stock. It looks awesome. Um, but I'm going to go over it again. So, same thing. The flower looks pretty good. But I'm still going to do it again. And usually she says on this time just to use the lighter color. So like if I'm going to do the flower again, just go in there with the pink. But I still kind of like to mix it up. So I'll do this. And you know what? I'm going to do a little more circular. I can see on the birds I went straight back and forth. And you can kind of see the streaks there. Like the pen marks. Okay, it's been a while. I'm off my mojo with my local kings. Uh, I'm still going to add a little bit of pink here and there. And you're kind of mixing the color. You're kind of blending it. I don't know if you can see. I'm like kind of working it in there. Um, okay, so I'm going to go over the whole thing again with the mostly the lighter colors. I'll still add a little bit of the darker color if I want, but I'm going to go over the whole thing again in the same areas. And, um, and then we'll stamp it again, okay? Okay, so there it goes again. And then again, I'm going to give a little huff, a little breath on that. I know it's weird, but that's <laughs> what works. And I'm going to give it a good pressing. Right in that center, especially. Yeah, look at the colors. How much more vibrant with that second pass. Okay, I'm going to go wash this off. And when I say wash it off, I'm just going to get a towel with like a little water and just wipe it off because it's a water-based marker. Anyway, give that a moment to dry. And then we're going to use the dye on this. So everything like that's white is basically going to get removed, which is really cool. I'll be right back. And look at that. I mean, that's kind of why on the other one, I couldn't even tell that I had used it. I thought it was brand new. But no, it was not. Okay, so I'm going to put this back on the carrier. And let's cut this guy out. Oh, that's the wrong one. And then we'll make like some kind of background of, of course, finish our card. What I like to do with these guys is I try to put them back in the place um, that makes sense, you know, the way I brought them out. So the dark blue to light blue. Actually, that seems weird. I had that one mixed up. Okay, I'll just put them back away. Um, and then this guy, let me just cut. Oh yeah, I'm definitely going to keep all these on here because I don't even use those magnets anyway, so it's good to have them. Worked really well with this. I remember back in the day, I think I used some Nina paper, um, solar white, ultra smooth kind of paper, and that worked well too compared to like just any old cardstock. Uh, again, these just it just looks nicer when you have a very smooth, smooth paper. Um, I think these were here. And oh, that's what I did. There's something weird there. Anyway, we'll put those there. All right. So this little guy. Now, she makes it so it's pretty easy just to see through it and you're pretty close. Like even these little squares in the corners kind of help you see where you're at. Um, you know, I can see that there's too much white there, so I would probably want to move that up. There's a crow outside. <laughs> Maybe several of them. <laughs> so, I mean, look at how you can just like see through it and you're pretty well like on the mark, you know. And I can maybe move that down just a little bit there. Okay. Uh, donut. Here she is. Now, if you have a machine that does, you know, embossing and then cutting separately or however you want to do it, you definitely want to do the embossing because it does have a lot of areas for embossing on these dies. Since I'm probably going to run this through the marquee, I'm going to do it a little bit different and you guys probably already know what I'm going to do, which is use a piece of foam. Where is my foam? Let me grab that right quick. And I'll grab just like craft foam, fun foam, kids foam from Walmart. If you're lucky, you can find it at the Dollar Store. I haven't seen it in a long time at the Dollar Store. Well, at least not my local Dollar Tree. I might have to trim that down. Is it raining? <laughs> uh, it is. Which is fine. We need rain, but um, I probably left something outside that doesn't need to be rained on. <laughs> Okay, uh, let me see. And you know what's crazy? I literally just watered some plants this morning. Because I was like, oh, I haven't watered these in a few days. And it was really hot the last couple days. It's probably not going to rain hard enough to even water them anyway. So I guess that's okay. Anyhow, I'm running it all at the same time with that foam. Because that foam helps pop it up. A lot of times people will, if they don't have foam, they use like two or three sheets of cardstock. Because it gives that pressure. 
um, you know, however it is that you work it with your marquee to get that embossing, will be fine. Again, I don't have to pop this out now. If I wanted to, I could pop this out because it's cut all the way through. Um, actually, interesting enough, this die has those little notches so that you don't have to take it away from the paper if you don't want. See how? But anyway, you can just cut that away and then put that behind your piece that you cut here for dimension. But like I just mentioned, this has those little pieces in the die that like cuts. So, see, that's another thing I forgot about. You can keep it on your card front. You don't have to cut it completely away. But I probably will cut it completely away this time because you saw the way I cut it down. It's not made to be a card front. But, I mean, look at this. Do you see, even the coloring out here, there's none. Because it perfectly cut on the die, you know? Like on this area. So, with these little chads that are hanging on. Again, so you can cut it into your card front. You don't have to cut this away. If I wanted to, honestly, I can probably keep a little bit of the white frame. But I'm not going to. So, I'm just going to... Boop, cut that little notch. And find the next one. She does only a few. It's not like it's like a whole ton of them that you have to, like, contend with. You know, there's just a couple here and there. So I'm just going to go around, find where they are, and just give them a little, little snippy snip, and I'll be right back. Okay, so there I have that, and I grabbed a card base. Oh, and this also has like little bits that you can pop out, which is very lovely. <laughs> it's so cute. So just that one little bit. Um, I don't know if you can see these little dots. Like just more dimension that's added by those things. I think I'm going to put this like in this corner here. So we're going to make a background for this. Um... Let's think. I'm trying to think if I want to use paper that's already made. Yeah, I think I have a paper that's already going to be good for this. And then I'll just use some of my uh, script stamp to kind of distress or make it look fun. So let me pick out some paper that I'm going to pretty much line my card with. And I'll be right back. Oh my gosh, guys. Since recently I've been using this paper all up. It's that <laughs> watercolor pad. Um, Summer Breeze from Crafts Companion. Which I had a link for it yesterday whenever I used it to HSN. The only thing is that it's not this particular pad it's one that's similar because they used to have it under the same link um but it still has like the little die cut pieces if you want you know something like that it still has like these little things that we can use but i'm gonna use this piece of paper and unfortunately it got torn some torn somehow which is fine because i'm gonna use it like this so uh i'm gonna cut this down to i'm still thinking about if i have anything outside i need to bring it <laughs> hopefully not uh for I really, that's so funny, like right at that four inches. I'm going to do four and an eighth just to max it out and see if it, I get rid of that torn part. Yay, good. So four and an eighth by five and three eighths. And then I'm going to, that can be torn, thrown away even though, well, maybe we can use that for something else. Again, I don't like to keep that scraps like that small, but... I can find uses for them, so I try to hold on to them nowadays. Um, this piece I can probably use later. So we're going to put this here. And I'm just kind of going with it. Like, honestly, I was going to find paper that was pink, but this looks really nice. And then all I'm going to do is take this. And let's just ink it up with some brown ink. Let's make sure my words are going the right direction. It looks like my, so the others is up and down. Again, that doesn't matter. If you wanted to make it more funky, that's fine. Um, how faded do I want this? Let me see. I really like this look of this whenever I do stuff like this. I was going to use some memento brown, but it's very brown. So let me see how this, we'll see how light and faded this is. So I'm just inking that up and literally I'm just going to take this and just touch it here and there. Hopefully not have it. It's very light. Oh, but that's so pretty. I want it to be kind of funky, like not really a jagged edges, you know what I'm saying? So I'm gonna put more ink on that. Aw. Just a little something. That's good. I like that. Let me see. It is very, very faint. So let me do one more thing. Just, oh no! <laughs> Do you see what happened there? Yay! Good job, Yane. <laughs> I got it up there. Um, and then some on the frame, which you won't be able to sell until later. Uh, let's do that again. 
and I want that a little bit lighter. So let me get some junk paper, a little scrap paper to pick up some of that. And then now we'll do it again. Now let me think, I want this corner. There we go. And I'm making it kind of rough. Hopefully you can kind of notice that. Okay, that's lovely. All right, and since I'm going to go rinse this off, I'm going to clean this up or else it's going to stick to my surface. And I'm also going to take a little bit of that same Distress Ink and just go around the edges. Okay, and I'll be back. So, this is going to be relatively flat, I think. I'm going to just glue it down flat, but if you wanted to, I mean, we used to shaker these. We've done all kinds of fun things with this stuff. But, um, you know, maybe pop this up just so you have some more dimension. But I think this is lovely. And then we'll add a little something. A lot of times I left these without sentiments because most of the whole thing is actually working this part of it, right? And the sentiment, of course, is whatever you want. I mean, you can even pop this up if you wanted to put some dimensionals in the large areas. And it'll just be very delicate, kind of popped up. But I'm going to go ahead and glue it down. Now I don't put a ton of glue because I want it glued down, but I also want it to have a little bit of movement. It's going to be kind of fun. So. Of course on these edges. Why is my finger in the way there? I don't know. Okay. See, I can tell there was glue coming off the side there. Uh, let's put this little guy here, and as straight as I can. Oh, it's so fun working with these again. I haven't tried them out in a while. That's what takes the most of the time is just that little coloring. And you can see, I mean, it doesn't take a lot of time. If you know, <laughs> obviously, if I'm talking and kind of being distracted and stuff, but like if I was just sitting here working on this, I would pop that out. And the dimension you feel in here is just so cute. So again, I try to leave it a little bit fun because you can see there's like space behind it just so it has a little chunkiness. Now, we can put a little organza bow on this. We can put whatever our sentiment might be. Let me think about how I want to finish it off and I'll be right back. Okay, you know I got this little bit out of that same paper pack just to bring in like the a different color. Ooh, why is that in there so well? <laughs> I thought, oh, I'll just pop it out real quick. There we go. So I will ink around this one a little bit. And I'm going to try to pop some organza in here. Like I mentioned, I need some organza, like thinner ribbon, but I keep playing with the same one. But that's okay. I'm sure it'll be fine. Usually I just kind of roll it up. So I like put tape or something. I just need to let it get in there. And I'm just going to make a knot. So I'm just going to cut this off. See where we're at. And then I'll pop that down with some dimensionals. I can make a bow, but I figured just a knot is good enough. Honestly, just a tie maybe. Swell. <laughs> I'm trying to make this a little bit tighter. That weird little bunch that it's getting right there goes around this way. Yeah, I think that's good enough. Boop. I'll play with this and see where I can get it so it looks more settled in. Maybe I do have to go for the full knot, huh? All right, fine. I'm going to have to cut it down even more, <laughs> hopefully. Not too much more. Yeah, the full knot basically put it where we want it. Okay, again, I'm going to cut a little bit off just because I got a little bit frayed. And then... Oh, my goodness. <laughs> From the last swap, I was putting things aside, and they're still right there covering things up. Where? Let's see. Ooh. Let's get that one tucked away a little bit more. Very careful if you're gonna singe stuff. Now, oh, come on, buddy. Are you out? I have another one. This those are done. I had to grab another one, and I went and put dimensionals on the back because I think my neighbor's baby's out playing in the rain. <laughs> really sweet, but you can hear. Okay. Um, put that right there. I know sometimes we don't like to cover our, you know, coloring and stuff, but I mean, that's not the biggest deal. If you want to put it somewhere else, obviously put it wherever you like. But there we go. Sweet card. Haven't played with these in a long time. Really fun to get those out and just 
Honestly, that's all you're doing is like scribbling color and it just looks amazing. I mean, if you look at it up close, you can see the different color, you know, variation stuff. But from like this, it just looks awesome. Like, I love it. All right, guys, thanks for watching. Um, I will see you guys at the next one. And thanks for suggesting because I mentioned it, people are like, yeah, 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 do more local kings. So <laughs> there it is. All right, guys, I'll see you at the next one. Bye now.